In Grand Theft Auto, there are many mysteries, but few come anywhere near as close to being as infamous as this one. And in the decade since Grand Theft Auto V's release, this one only appears to have gotten bigger. Few mysteries have the mobility to grow and expand over time, and yet if anything it seemingly has. In fact, I had to warm myself up to feel even remotely prepared to take on a video about it, but I'd like to think that I'm there now, ready to take on the challenge of hiking up a particularly tall virtual mountain, which just so happens to be the apparent focal point of this conundrum. Will I find answers or simply more questions? Join me as we explore the infamous mystery of Mount Chiliad. Canonically, Mount Chiliad is the tallest mountain in the fictional state of San Andreas. It towers over Grape Sea to the south and Polito Bay to the northwest at a height of 2,619 feet above sea level, which is nowhere remotely close to the tallest mountain ever, but it's impressive in terms of a game, and certainly well beyond tall enough to stand out. But in the eyes of gamers all over the world, its colossal presence on the map of Grand Theft Auto V is but a minuscule footnote when compared to the scope of the mystery it holds. Now, I haven't explained what that mystery actually is yet. You probably already know considering you're watching this video. But if you'd be so kind as to allow me to be methodical, we'll get there. So naturally players began to notice there may be some greater significance to Mount Chiliad in this game when they came to the summit of the mountain, which is truthfully the only way I can fathom people happening upon this mystery naturally. On the journey up the northern face of the mountain in particular, players noticed these symbols dotted around the place. As for what they mean, we'll come to that. But first, let's get to the summit of Chiliad. In the promotional content in the build up to the launch of GTA 5, players noticed the box atop the mountain, the shed, which turned out to be a lovely cable car station. Within it, players quickly took note of this peculiar mural, seemingly portraying the mountain but with various glyphs. There's a flying saucer, an egg, and a jetpack, and from them lines that go through various boxes with crude crosses drawn in them, all the way to the summit of the mountain, where there's a glyph consistent with those found on the northern face of Chiliad, except this one's red, which means it's cooler or something. As for other curiosities found at the summit, we have a viewing platform, upon which there are two telescopes that cost one dollar a go. Beneath the platform is another glyph, consistent with the ones on the face of the mountain, but red like the one on the mural. And finally, there's a message etched into the platform's woodwork, one that simply reads, come back when your story is complete. It would seem the mountain has more secrets to share with us, just not yet. Undoubtedly, this would send players into a frenzy of curiosity. Chiliad had already featured in GTA San Andreas and been the focal point of many myths, from legends of Bigfoot to angels to mysterious objects in the sky. Nothing came with a substantial explanation, but some of these strange occurrences appeared to hold just enough weight to keep people interested, such as the phenomenon of occasional black dots falling from the sky. And so Mount Chiliad was already a mysterious place, and this time around it appeared to yield something with a bit more meat to it, and of course players were quick to uncover the full secret of the mountain. Returning upon 100% completing the game, having deduced the glyphs on the mountain's face are instructions to go to the top of Mount Chiliad at night time during a thunderstorm, with the red marker beneath the viewing platform instructing you more specifically to stand on the platform itself, and having done all that, you will be rewarded. An archetypal flying saucer spacecraft will hover above the mountain. I'd refer to it as a UFO, but it's no longer unidentified, so we can't. It's just an aircraft of some description, but irregular in every way, except that it's of a shape typically associated with UFOs. But would this discovery imply that ET was in town? It's easy enough to look at this flying saucer and think aliens, but no. There's enough to suggest that this isn't alien in nature. 
at least not directly. You see the mysterious aircraft bears the letters FIB. FIB stands for Federal Investigation Bureau, the Grand Theft Auto equivalent to the FBI. The word FIB, spelt F-I-B, is a synonym for lie, so you can understand Rockstar's intentions with that one. What a law enforcement agency would get out of having aircraft of this calibre is unclear, but nonetheless their name being on the side of the vessel suggests this flying saucer is earthly in origin. Unless the namesake is being used by aliens to draw less attention to themselves, in which case, mission fail. Regardless, this is clearly the Mount Chiliad discovery Rockstar intended for us, suggesting the existence of aliens within the GTA universe whilst also providing just enough ambiguity that you still come away without an answer. A statement that massively simplifies the Chiliad mystery, because not only is the answer unclear, it's also not entirely clear what the question even is, but more on me ripping this mystery apart for being a pain in the ass later. While we're still looking at the alien wavelength, Mount Chiliad isn't the only location where you can see what appears to be a rather stereotypical alien spaceship. If we go to the hippie camp located not far from Sandy Shores, there are some further details. First and foremost, there are glyphs like those found on the northern face of Mount Chiliad. And while we're at it, there's clear alien imagery, or at the very least iconography inspired by the idea of aliens. The graffitied words beam me up, which I'd imagine is a Star Trek reference, and a very particular assortment of characters that reads 6EQUJ5. It may seem random at first, but this is a nod to the WOW signal, a strong narrowband signal detected on the 15th of August 1977 by the Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope, which at the time was being used to search for extraterrestrial intelligence. It seems the signal originated from the Sagittarius constellation, and it's been immortalised by believers as potential proof that aliens are indeed out there. It's a cool easter egg, I couldn't not mention it, but in the context of the GTA universe it means nothing beyond the hippies at this camp believe in aliens, and that helps summarise the vast majority of what can actually be found here. The only thing of interest are the two Chiliad-esque glyphs. Taken as instructions, I presume they mean the same again, come at night time during stormy weather. But I tried this and it didn't yield much in the way of results, even at 100% completion, but that doesn't mean something isn't there. For way up in the sky, directly above the beam me up spot in the hippie camp, we can find another curious rounded seemingly alien aircraft that fits the stereotype of a flying saucer. However, once again it bears the FIB's logo. However, unlike the Chiliad object where if you get too close it will disappear, you can get close to this one and it yields a rather strange effect. It's a bit like TV static. And I suppose the presence of noise indicates to us that this flying object is emitting radiation. And that might explain why the FIB aren't openly using these as part of their everyday operations. They're not refined enough to be considered safe yet. It would also explain why this particular unit is so far off the ground. Also, when it comes to this particular flying saucer, apparently, should you fly too close to it while operating an aircraft, it will be disabled. In other words, it's a dangerous bit of kit, or maybe it's intentional to stop people from getting too close and then living to tell people the FIB is in possession of these machines. I also don't know why these UFO-esque flying saucers have loaded in bugged for me. I presume that's a consistent thing that many people have experienced, but honestly, I don't know. But I could have sworn I've seen images where the FIB logo stays in one place and spins with the rest of the ship. But I suppose that's not important, I just wanted to address the obvious visual factor there. So, so far we have two apparent UFOs with FIB livery that would suggest they're actually human in origin. So far it would appear as if extraterrestrials haven't had much time to factor in at all. And that's not going to change as we mooch over to Fort Zancudo to observe another one of these things, but with the twist. At night time atop a bunker within the fort, you may notice a green beam trained from the sky at the roof. It flickers a bit so I apologise if you have photosensitive epilepsy, you're either cured or you're in serious trouble. But the source of this mysterious beam appears to be another flying saucer of sorts. But this one's a bit different as it's more angular and sharp, and doesn't spin like the others. 
It's very stealthy in appearance, besides from the fact that it's a floating circle, and yet somehow I don't suspect it's escaped the notice of the military base beneath it. Beneath it there are a series of moving parts, but more importantly this text down here that's in English. Now I doubt aliens speak English, or at least it wouldn't be on their spaceships. An observation of the vessel's barely present interior reveals it appears to be piloted by two blokes. And so, the Fort Zancudo UFO in inverted commas would appear to be man-made. They have some proper futuristic attire going on, but then again, this wasn't intended to be seen. And you'd expect the pilot of one of these bad boys to stand out. In reality, it would be the opposite, but for dramatic effect, I'm going to stand by that statement. There's nothing on this peculiar shaped aircraft to suggest its allegiances to the FIB. And it's also the first of these to actually present a visible cockpit, inside which it appears to have human occupants. I'd hazard a guess that this is a top secret space aircraft of some description, and that may very well be the case for the FIB flying saucers as well. But it's clear these designs are inspired by something unconventional to say the least. Could these machines be inspired by visitors from another planet? Or are they simply inspired from the public perception of little green men in flying saucers? After all, nothing we've explored thus far suggests the presence of actual aliens anywhere. Every so-called UFO we've seen up until this point has been man-made, and hippies will believe anything if the weed is strong enough. But there is one more circular aircraft to be located, but unlike the others, it doesn't require 100% completion to see. See what I did there? You're going to. Welcome to the sea. It's a great place to hide bodies if you have any left over in your freezer. Not that I'm condoning murder, or in fact, preserving your nan on a budget. Anyway, in the waters to the north and ever so slightly east of Polito Bay to the north of the map, in the shadow of Mount Chiliad as it happens, we will find the fourth story mode UFO, though we can sort of identify it, and it's not flying, so it's just an O. Though underwater it bears a striking resemblance to the FIB flying saucers, except it doesn't have any FIB logos on it, nor is it flying. But what makes this wreckage important is... This is the first quote-unquote UFO we've seen that doesn't necessarily immediately indicate that it was made by humans, or is indeed under the control of humans. Though presently it doesn't appear to be under the control of anybody on account of the fact that it's been binned. That said, however, this spaceship looking machine looks identical to the two FIB ones. And I know that I'm being very careful over the terminology I'm using when discussing these objects because they're not UFOs anymore because we've identified them to an agreeable extent to say that they are certainly aircraft. And I can't call them spaceships because nothing has indicated that they can actually go to space. At least so far. But a sunken peculiar aircraft like this that just so happens to be more or less identical to the FIB ones does suggest one of a few possibilities. Now, firstly, let's say this is the original test aircraft, as I'd imagine that's what they presently are as well. Well, clearly it crashed and has sunk to the bottom of the ocean, and that sort of mishap would be expected when experimenting with technology to this extent. The second prospect is that the FIB of all people are for some reason reverse engineering alien technology. And this is the original alien spaceship that crashed and has for some reason been left in the sea, which when you think about it from a top secret perspective makes absolutely no sense. But it also doesn't make sense in possibility one, let's be real. This downed flying saucer would certainly make sense if it belonged to the same program as the FIB's aircraft, explaining why they're identical barring the fact that one has an ecosystem growing on it now and the others have FIB logos. But that doesn't mean this program didn't start with reverse engineering alien technology. But even if that were the case, I think this is more than likely a human prototype rather than the actual alien vessel they're attempting to replicate because there's no way on a first attempt they'd do it so well nor would they necessarily be interested in having the same result as what they'd found, as it would have to be adjusted inevitably to an entirely different species. The alternative idea is the FIB is employing aliens to pilot these vessels, but theories like that are what get you sectioned. And we see the possible evolution of this program above Fort Zancudo with this much more futuristic looking, seemingly stealth-oriented floating plate, 
which doesn't even spin, and has a more menacing profile. It also looks more futuristic than even this, so provided both variants of circular aircraft are from the same program, it appears to be evolving rapidly or at least shooting off into different branches. We have the law enforcement with the FIB, and then we have the military with, well, the military. Anyway, both possibilities discussed so far aren't entirely mutually exclusive, but the third prospect is a bit different. What if the development of these unusual aircraft is simply to be novel? Basing the designs off the public perception of what an alien spaceship might look like, so that should they ever be seen in operation, everybody will just assume it's the aliens and likely be dismissed as lunatics. I personally refer to this strange tactic as particularly conspicuous stealth. Think it through, do you reckon this ultra-parodied version of the United States government wouldn't develop flying circles so they can further their oil interests abroad and then everybody thinks it's the aliens who took it? It could be a stroke of genius, or it could just be a genius having a stroke, and truthfully that's GTA's sweet spot. But these possibilities aren't awfully relevant just yet because we haven't gathered all of the information. But the point stands that there's still nothing that necessarily indicates the presence of actual extraterrestrials. So, where are all the aliens? Well, apparently they're chilling in caravans on Vinewood sets. Just kidding, those are just blokes in costumes. But there is something interesting to be seen if you took a trip to North Yankton with the boys. North Yankton is a location only seen in the prologue and one main story mission besides, and is otherwise inaccessible without the use of mods. But if you find the opportunity to get under a bridge where the railway intersects with the road, you might have noticed something in the ice. A creature not dissimilar to the green costumes we see. However, this guy is less stereotypically green, and technically exists here in this river in the past, as the prologue is set years before the main game. Now, could this alien in the river just be a bloke in a costume? Absolutely, but it would be really strange for a guy to be in an alien costume drowned in North Yankton, but then again, everything could be weirder. And the question is, of course, how would the filmmakers of Vinewood know what aliens actually look like so they could put them in their movies, if this was indeed a real creature? And I suppose in the end of the day, it's just a question of which unlikely event is the most likely. But it seems as if Rockstar or Adamant are not delivering anything without ambiguity. The green movie version of these aliens show up in a couple of Michael's hallucinations because he doesn't take well to drugs apparently. And though as part of that hallucination they're not real, it does appear as if Michael is actually scared of aliens. And they take on the exact same form as those costumed guys, the green version of the blue creature found in the icy river. And considering Michael is a movie buff, it's no shock as to where these aliens might have come from. And courtesy of a magazine found in Lester's house, we know this film is called Alien Prober 3. So perhaps there was already an Alien Prober movie, or even two out by the events of the prologue. But why would there even be a discarded alien costume in a frozen river in North Yankton? And if there's a guy in there, why would he be there either? And yet, that explanation seems more likely than Vinewood guys just knowing what aliens look like. In other words, the search continues. And maybe the answers are waiting to be found in previous Grand Theft Auto games. And though only the events of GTA 4 and 5 are canon to the 5 timeline, it would seem as if there are some interesting details in San Andreas, which is set in roughly the same area as GTA 5. You see, San Andreas had a playable area known as Bone County, which was based on Nevada, a place notorious for being home to the mysterious Area 51, which is parodied as Area 69, because of course, if you get too close to Area 69, you'll find yourself with a 5-star wanted level. And of course, nearby there's a diner called the Lil Pro Bin, which indicates what the public clearly thinks this base is hiding. Now apparently, in a mission set at Area 69 in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, you can overhear chatter on the intercom mentioning an alien body. And this mission is known as Black Project. I couldn't find any footage of this online, and because it's a throwaway, I didn't bother playing through the entirety of San Andreas to do it. Sorry. It would seem everybody was more obsessed with showing off fake encounters with aliens and modded encounters etc in San Andreas to fool people than they were actually finding interesting stuff, but whatever. However, that mission does send you after a jetpack, which is interesting. Apparently while inside Area 69 there are various announcements telling employees different things. For example, one of them 
is anyone caught stealing alien technology will not be invited to the next staff night out. Personnel found stealing alien technology will not be invited on the next staff night out. And so on. It's unclear how seriously these are meant to be taken, but it does imply that Area 69 is home to some extraterrestrial secrets. Nonetheless, it isn't canon to the same universe as 5, at least not directly, but regardless, it's the most unnuanced suggestion of alien presence that we've seen so far. An interesting location in GTA 5 to explore with regards to this might be the satellite relay station, comprised of six radio telescopes. At night, they illuminate a particular shade of green, but what's interesting about the place is the encounters vary depending on which version of the game you're playing. In the enhanced edition, you can encounter scientists here, but apparently in the original version, you can encounter FIB agents, and hanging around for too long would result in hostilities. There are signs on the site telling you not to trespass, but by the time you're close enough to read them, you're already trespassing. And there are of course no barriers telling you you can't go there legally. It does raise a good question though, what are these radio telescopes being used for? And could they be related to the two FIB UFO shaped aircraft we've encountered? It certainly doesn't get us any closer to answering the question where are the aliens, but I highly doubt this array is being used by the FIB and the scientists to make Skype calls. I'm sorry about that. There's also a stranger mission that may be of use here in which we help a bloke collect spaceship parts. Wait. Wait! Wait! Stop! What's the problem, homie? Wait! Carbon-based life form. Check. Six feet tall. Check. Slightly excessive adipose tissue. Normal distribution. Check. Readings are... Readings are... Shoot. This little machine is broken again. Check. Star date 14-9-305. Time is... 789 past the ninth meridian. We are clear. Whew. Greetings, CBL. Carbon-based life form. Greetings, homie. Have you seen them, CBL? Seen who? I don't know. They came to me last week. There was a brilliant joy and a terrible confusion. And they were laughing and screaming and crying all at once. And some said, Omega, we come in peace. And others said, we have come to enslave you. We are an infinitely intelligent race of super cosmic beings. And out of the six billion people on this planet, we have chosen you for no good reason. And just then they were about to abduct me and do experiments on me when their ship crashed. Man, you done lost your motherfucking mind. And now, I've got to find the pieces. Man, bullshit. Look, look. See this? Hmm? If you see some, if you see some, let me know. Yeah, yeah, okay, I will, man. So we meet a bloke named Omega who's scanning the area with a device we've actually seen before in an Epsilon program mission, who are also using it to look for something of extraterrestrial origin and Omega claims he needs to help the aliens rebuild their spaceship, sending us on a wild goose chase to collect all of their spaceship parts. They appear at various places across the world map, including many that are relevant to our investigation, such as the Hippie Camp, the array of radio telescopes we were just at, the surrounding areas of Mount Chiliad, and you get the point, they're all over the place. If you want to collect them all, look up a guide, you'll thank yourself later, but upon collecting them all and returning to Omega, we get the following cutscene. The final piece! I knew you would make it. Come. I have put together this ship to their exact specifications. I got every piece you sent through, except this. Man, you crazy motherfucker. Isn't it incredible? Awesome, dog, but this motherfucker is small. Well, they're small, but very powerful. They're far more evolved than we are. Man, I sure hope the fuck so. See you on the other side, brother. So it would seem as if the spaceship parts do indeed hold some power, 
and they powered this small device that hovered for a few moments and then landed again. Aside from that, there's a really strange car that appears to be powered by something odd. Nothing inherently strange, but it doesn't sound like an electric battery or even an engine. Furthermore, these spaceship parts having some function may imply this Omega character isn't as crazy as he first seems. They appear to power that floating small device. Maybe there are mini aliens in there, but I refuse to believe they just park it back on the table instead of, you know, leave. So are there aliens present in Grand Theft Auto 5 story mode? I really don't know. Every suggestion of their presence is counter-argued by the game itself. These otherworldly flying machines appear to have human occupants, as suggested by the FIB logo on the side of the ship. The spaceship parts appear to power this small alien vessel, but the man who sent us to collect them is hardly of the sane trimming. The alien in the lake, aside from the colour palette, is identical to the Vinewood costumes, so it could just be a dead bloke who for some reason is wearing the costume, or it could just be a discarded costume. These radio telescopes could very well be looking for signs of alien life, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's out there. As for the more compelling nods from San Andreas, that's not even canon to GTA V. As for the hippie stuff dotted around the place, such as at the UFO camp and other locations, I doubt hippies are privy to any insider information we're not, and though there's enough intrigue in the spaceship part side mission to make you think maybe there could be some weight to what this guy's saying, we're no closer to positively identifying aliens in the game. All we know is there's a government operation of some description, in which the FIB and more than likely other organisations are engineering flying sources for some reason or another, but it's unclear if they're reverse engineering alien technology or figuring it out for themselves. But not to worry, it appears as if there's more to this Chiliad mystery than just that. You see, with most mysteries and games in general, you know what question you're asking, and it's the answer you're looking for. But with the Chiliad mystery, it appears as if you're asking what question do we need to ask to get the answer we don't know. But it does appear to primarily focus on this mural. And yes, it does allude to the UFO easter egg that we've just gone into in painful detail, but that only appears to be a third of it. Yes, there's the UFO symbol, but there's also an egg that's cracking, and a jetpack. And those two glyphs aren't explained by the discovery atop the mountain upon 100% completing the game and coming here on a stormy night. So firstly, what could this egg mean? Could it be literal or metaphorical? It's unclear. There is an alien looking egg in the game files. It's silver with potent green bits. It also apparently appears in a hidden GTA Online mission, one which requires you to purchase a bunker and complete 600 supply runs at which point you may activate a hidden supply run in which a crashed UFO will appear, and in its shadow you will be able to pick up the egg, at which point aliens will appear, scream at the player, and then quickly disappear. Sadly, the aliens appear to be the same ones encountered as just blokes in costumes, or in Michael's hallucinations. It seems a bit small scale to be what the egg symbol on the Chiliad mural could be alluding to, but it could just be a broader nod to the online component. But it'd be a very niche reference that only 0.0001% of people would even hope to understand. It could also just be a nod to Polito Bay where you can find a lot of egg symbolism. It's also nearby to where you'd find the sunken flying saucer and not one but two of the spaceship parts. If you think about it, nothing actually guides you to this sunken so-called spaceship. And since the mural helped guide us to the UFO at Mount Chiliad, what if these symbols are guiding us to the others too? In which case, the image of a bloke wearing a jetpack might reference the military base we found one in, in San Andreas. And that could within itself be a nod to the stealthy flying saucer we see above Fort Zancudo. But that would truly be my confirmation bias at work, because nothing on the mural would then rationally lead us to the hippie camp. Where of course, way up in the sky, there's another one of those bad boys to be found. But of course, this site has its own glyphs akin to those found up the mountain that indicate the peculiar presence of a flying saucer on their own. But then there are these boxes with crosses in them. What would they mean in that context? And for that matter, any context. 
Many have theorized it's a map to the glyphs located along the mountain's north face, but others claim it doesn't really line up. And that brings us to what the actual Chiliad mystery is. Nobody can quite tell you what this mural even means. Now let's run with the assumption that the mural isn't just a map to finding an easter egg that's easier to understand than the cipher that leads to it, and turn our attention for the moment to the jetpack. Now in the GTA San Andreas Mission Black project that I've already mentioned, the objective is to steal a jetpack. So that game had the jetpack, but GTA 5 story mode does not appear to. Grand Theft Auto Online, on the other hand, courtesy of the Doomsday Heist update, has the thruster. Now this particular GTA Online update has come up recurringly in my research of the Chiliad mystery, and in the final act of the Doomsday Heist, the player infiltrates this Mount Chiliad launch facility, which was apparently secretly constructed within the mountain during the 1960s due to the Cold War. Built for the function of housing and being able to launch a large nuclear arsenal that had been sealed off for decades and is accessed via a disguised entrance found along the road passing through the tunnel under the mountain. Apparently the thruster plays its part in the mission here, not that I would know, I don't really play the online, but this secret facility and indeed the thruster itself may very well be what this jetpack symbol is there to symbolise. When within this facility though, players took note of a peculiar mural, or should I say a peculiar series of murals, that stood out against the brutalist architecture and decoration. There are some interesting details that may crop up in other parts of Grand Theft Auto V. For example, there's a part depicting the evolution of Bigfoot. There's also the number 8 on its side, which is a nod to Infinity. Of course, GTA V has the Infinity Killer, who claimed the number 8 is just Infinity standing up. There also appears to be a condensed version of the original Chiliad mural on here too. And next to it, there's an eye symbol, which is certainly interesting, as the original mural may be depicting an eye rather than a UFO atop the mountain, as there is a Mount Chiliad tattoo that does the same thing. The tattoo shows the Chiliad mural with an eye symbol above the mountain, an eye within a triangle. Now where have I seen imagery like that before? Perhaps a translation of the Latin at the bottom of the tattoo might help us. Novus Ordo Seclorum which according to Google Translate means something along the lines of New Order of the Ages. And as you can imagine, that's going to raise eyebrows when part of the same piece is an eye within a triangle. This symbol is seen many times in Grand Theft Auto V and is of course the Eye of Providence, also known as the Eye of Horus, or better yet, the All-Seeing Eye. It's a symbol of many meanings, but is quite often associated with conspiracy theories. So on the one hand, you could use it to allude to the Illuminati, but you could also just be referencing the US dollar. So it's used, for example, in Lester's house with the poster that reads, The man is watching you, could just and probably does just mean the US government. So perhaps this eye symbol doesn't directly mean the UFO that we see at the top of the mountain, as we can see based on the UFO drawing on the same mural it's not trying to depict the same thing, but rather it's just a symbol for the government. And that certainly tracks when the FIB are the ones operating the flying saucer in the first place, as indicated by the spinning FIB logo on the side of the machine. So we spent all this time hoping and looking for aliens only to find the government. But if the answer truly is the government, then the Chiliad mural is simpler than it first looks. That is at least until you factor that it could have a multitude of meanings and only one of them is the government is up to some shady business at the mountain. Now, this may sound a bit mental, but maybe there's a moral sentiment in there somewhere. I was trying to figure out what the Doomsday murals had in common, and my logic went a bit like this. The yellow mural hints at the Chiliad one, and at the centre of that you have the government, which is humanity, whether they choose to believe it or not. The red mural alludes to the Infinity Killer, though it's unclear if intentional, and in the end of the day, the Infinity Killer is just one really messed up guy. A human being. The green mural hints at Bigfoot, who, in the context of Grand Theft Auto V, turns out to be just a man in a suit. And the purple mural appears to explore psychology. We have yin and yang, building blocks, a keyhole, balanced scales, a trident, an eye, a maze, and a brain. It appears to represent the human mind, or psychology. And in order to have a human mind, you need to have a human. And though this description certainly glosses over a lot of detail and a lot of secrets hidden within those murals, 
everywhere you look, it doesn't mention aliens, but rather people. Just so we're clear, I promise I'm going somewhere with this. We know the UFO rigmarole goes beyond just the FIB, and in downtown Los Santos we can find their headquarters, or at least their regional headquarters, twinned with another building that is the IAA headquarters, which is the Grand Theft Auto equivalent to the CIA, I presume. There is a number designation on each of the roofs of these buildings that are almost similar to two access points designations in the tunnel that passes through Chiliad which is entirely unrelated to the point I'm about to make, but I wanted to show you that flimsy comparison because I've seen it brought up before, but there was something where these buildings are within eyeshot that drew my attention. If we head to where Textile City meets Sinner Street, we can observe a mural that's known as the Sinner's Passage mural, probably due to being located on Sinner's Passage. It shows two arms extending from a disc, with the hands making a triangle. There's a V, which I presume is the number 5, in Roman numerals, and there is an I, and this image is bordered by a phrase. And the phrase reads, For when the great scorer comes to write against your name, he marks not that you won, but how you played the game. Which is a quote from a poem written by American sports writer Grantland Rice, and though its initial context appears to be that sad marketing exercise that Americans call football, it is enjoyable to watch, just call it what it is, wearing armour and playing rugby wrong. Anyway, this enduring quote from Rice's poem Alumnus Football, I suppose could be applied to a lot more than just that sport, especially when removed from its initial context and put on a mural with some freaky stuff going on. We have an eye next to two arms that are making a triangle with two hands and the letter V. The arms making the triangle with the I symbol next to it representing the man is certainly made interesting when you take into consideration the location of this mural with the FIB and IAA headquarters situated not far behind it. As for how the last sentence of that poem fits with it, perhaps it's a message to authority. They may have power now, but when the game is over, as in when you are gone, all you will be remembered for is the corruption and the tyranny. There's symbolism in Los Santos' skyline as well. The FIB and IAA buildings are some of the tallest around, and the only one that's noticeably taller is that of Maze Bank. And there does appear to be a maze of sorts behind the artwork on the mural, along with some hidden words. Now you're probably wondering, what does the height of Maze Bank by comparison to the second tallest building being the joint FIB and IAA buildings have to do with anything? Now if you looked out over a real skyline and saw something like this, it could very well be a circumstance, it's just the way things happen to be. But storytelling media is way more contrived, so this could very well be symbolism of the FIB and IAA effectively being subservient to the true power of the country. Money. And the financial interests of organisations don't always line up with the human interests of the people they're there to serve but that would certainly take Grantland Rice's poem far out of its own context, but it could certainly be applied to the Chiliad mystery in a broader point that it's making. And to not bore you with a GCSE English level dissection, the poem is about the process of overcoming adversity and pushing forwards even when it seems impossible, because life isn't about winning or losing, it's simply the process of experiencing. So the words on Mount Chiliad's viewing platform reading come back when your story is complete, when perceived from this direction, is much more impactful because seeing this UFO signifies your story is over, and Grand Theft Auto V story mode at least has little more significant to show you. It's almost putting you on the spot and making you evaluate how you feel about that fact. All of this time as one of the most gripping mysteries in the history of video games, and the Chiliad mystery could just turn out to be a meta-commentary convoluted by both red herrings and teasers about online content. But I'm not going to end the video on my theory because, admittedly, it did take a lot of mental gymnastics, but we have the benefit of 10 years worth of hindsight here, I think it's time we tapped into that. In 2018, Rockstar Games released Red Dead Redemption 2, the much anticipated prequel to the 2010 Spaghetti Western inspired cowboy game. On a formulaic level, the game is very similar to Grand Theft Auto, except you ride horses instead of drive cars. And like the GTA series, the game hosts a ton of secrets, including one that mirrors part of the Mount Chiliad conundrum. Atop a mountain near Strawberry and West Elizabeth, players can sight, you guessed it, an alien spaceship, or at least what looks like one. 
Considering the bulk of the game is set in 1899, I doubt the FIB are behind this, and on a broader scale, humanity, I suppose, because, well, technology hasn't advanced anywhere near this far yet. But considering the premises you're able to observe a UFO from a tall mountain, it didn't take players long to draw the connection between this and the Chiliad mystery. There is a bit of flesh to this Mount Shan mystery, including the frozen remains of a couple holding a map known as the Panoramic Map that is believed to be connected, as it appears to depict an illustration of the view from the top of the mountain, and its true meaning, just like GTA V's Chiliad mural, eludes understanding. In the game there's also a cabin in which you can find a group of people who appear to have ended themselves with the beliefs they'll be reborn in an alien spaceship, and the first time you enter the cabin in the middle of the night, said alien spaceship will appear above the cabin and remain there until you leave it. And you'll know when that happens before you look up because you'll hear it and things will start illuminating green. Now the direct relations end up being made by the same company, as Red Dead Redemption and Grand Theft Auto do not share a joint universe. And though it's been theorised that they in fact do, I believe somebody with authority at Rockstar Games has come out and said no. Therefore, any details that carry over should be considered little more than an easter egg. But my ability to compartmentalise that is weakened by the fact that there are some rather elaborate ones. Francis Sinclair, for example, appears to bear resemblance to the GTA Epsilon program's depiction of a descendant of Kraft, which is their god. He speaks in a dialect from a different time period and has futuristic clothing. There's enough to suggest that he's a time traveller. He has knowledge of future events and sends you off to collect rock carvings that depict them. And if that's not enough to satisfy you, the stranger mission that involves him, Geology for Beginners, ends with you meeting his baby self. Now the Epsilon program are largely suggested in Grand Theft Auto V to be bullshit merchants above all else. And little in GTA V story mode gives their beliefs validity. But upon your first death in GTA Online, the cult's leader, Chris Farmage, will come to you in a vision to let you know he's entered spectator mode, and subsequently became my desktop wallpaper. How does this relate to the Chiliad mural? Well, we know that relates to aliens, or at least as we've gone over the perception of them. Well, Epsilonism is based on the Church of Scientology, and they apparently believe there are mortal alien beings trapped in human bodies and that is mirrored by the Epsilon program when it financially suits them, but that still doesn't necessarily apply the Epsilon program to the Chiliad mystery, and I believe it is a bit of a red herring, but if you can draw a connection, you're a better man than me. But thanks to Francis Sinclair, Red Dead Redemption 2 has the Time Traveler's Mural, which is equally if not more enigmatic than the Chiliad Mural. I just feel as if the relation is scant, primarily because it occurs in a different universe, and Rockstar aren't strangers to muddying the waters with unexplainable nonsense just to throw you off trail. Honestly, it's something I've had to navigate an awful lot of when researching for this video. Back fully to GTA V, as for other loose ends, we have Bigfoot, though outside of proximity and being used for symbolism, I don't necessarily understand where the actual direct connection is, though like I said, he is in the Doomsday Mural, but all it does is acknowledge that the truth is, Bigfoot is just a bloke in a costume. Beyond that, the final Golden Peyote planned hallucination takes you to Mount Chiliad, or at least the foot of it, and then off to fight the beast, which is interesting within itself, but it doesn't lead back into the broader mystery of the mountain. But again, the last one is the final Strangers and Freaks mission in Grand Theft Auto V, after which point you're free to head up Mount Chiliad and observe the flying saucer. So maybe there is actually a connection there, it just might not necessarily be to Bigfoot himself rather just engaging with the mission in which you hunt the poor guy. It just likes dressing up as a big hairy ape man, leave him alone. It may be worth noting that in GTA San Andreas, players claimed to see Bigfoot at Mount Chiliad, but Bigfoot isn't actually in the game, so... Uh, I don't know. But Rockstar have never been against the popular fan myths that have come from their games, even though it wasn't their initial intention. It's an incredibly popular subgenre that's explored within the games regardless of whether or not these things are actually there, and a lot of the implementation of this stuff in more recent titles is likely able to be attributed to the fact that people clearly wanted it there. And a lot of the mysteries that can then be stemmed from that are just incredibly long-winded, satisfying fan service, and the player feels like they've discovered something and perhaps that's what the Chiliad mystery can be boiled down to. 
A bit of fan service to cap off the gaming experience that is Grand Theft Auto V that has spiralled uncontrollably into a massive multi-faceted mystery where nobody's even sure what they're looking for. And maybe somebody has found the solution and just hasn't realised it. That's if the solution wasn't cut with the cancelled plans for the DLC. You know, in favour of the online mode. But until somebody with a really big brain comes along, I suppose we're all in the dark on that one. Another loose end worth touching down on before I come to any conclusions is the Infinity Killer. For those who don't know, the Infinity Killer is a man named Merle Abrams who was arrested for murdering joggers in the late 1990s. He lived in Sandy Shores, his house is wonderfully decorated, he has nondescript biological matter in jars. There's a short environmental story that leads you to the site where he left the victims, which happens to be at the tip of Polito Bay, not far from Mount Chiliad. Furthermore, in the Doomsday Heist, the number 8 sideways is on the Doomsday Mural. And as we know, the number 8 is the Infinity Killer's call sign because he believes the number 8 is just Infinity stood up. Where this connection garners weight is actually in Grand Theft Auto 4, on which upon completing the game, Nico Bellic is sent an email from a user named Chiliad8888, which may be an example of foresight, where Rockstar Games knew that the Chiliad mystery would be a hit by this point, so they slapped that in there. Alternatively, they may not have been that far ahead in development, but it might have been an idea that they'd had. Regardless, the number 8 showing up after Chiliad is certainly interesting. Now, Chiliad8888 only sends you an email to whatthedonotwantyoutoknow.com, which in GTA 4 is just a series of maps that leads you to things you can find in the open world. Certain collectibles, armour, weapons, cars, strangers and freaks missions, etc. And doesn't really have any canon value and doesn't get updated. So the Infinity Connection does certainly fizz out a fair bit, but the contents of the actual email are quite interesting. Pilgrim, expand your horizons, go to www.whatthedonotwantyoutoknow.com to travel the path that will allow you to unlock your inner spirit guide and know the full potential of earthly splendour that is your right as a golden dharma god. These secrets will allow you to read between the lines of society, physics and logic. The man is trying to keep you down. He has built this world as your cage. Break free. You have been shown the gateway. Walk through it. Feel the truth. Live in freedom. And it's one short sentence that drew me to this. The man is trying to keep you down. Would that also happen to be this man? That incidentally is also this man that is this man and therefore is this man. Obviously, the man is the government, so yes. But coming from a user with Chiliad in their name is what makes this pop to me. I'll admit, the government being behind it is something we figured out in the first five minutes of this video. And this finding hardly revolutionises that thought, but perhaps it's simply vindication. But perhaps the government's motivation behind funding the engineering of these otherworldly aircraft is to exert control over the populace. But that would be absurd and in character for the Grand Theft Auto universe's depiction of the man. Now this GTA 4 stuff may have no intended correlation whatsoever, as Mount Chiliad was indeed present in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and was already a legendary location long before GTA 5 hit the shelves. But I like to think there was a modicum of foresight there and Rockstar have certainly proven themselves capable of it. But at least we can move off of this point now. Another loose end is this hatch found in the sea. Located far enough away from Mount Chiliad to more than likely be entirely unrelated, and apparently from this hatch we can hear banging if we get too close. Supposedly Morse code that's been translated by somebody out there at least, and apparently Roman Bellic has relocated underwater because it simply says, hey, you never call, how do you fancy going bowling? You see, it's important to acknowledge when addressing any form of Rockstar game mystery that Rockstar do engage in a mild bit of trolling on occasion, and that's about as far as I'd go with the hatch. So I'm sure there's plenty to the Chiliad mystery that's just Rockstar messing with the player, 
It's worth mentioning that somebody somewhere could be laughing at the expense of everybody exploring the Chiliad mystery in depth, which now includes myself. Anyway, then of course there's the Altruist Cult, a religious sect of naked old men who live in relative seclusion up in the Chiliad state wilderness, not far from the mountain. Apparently they like eating people, and their entire website save for their logo is in Morse code. Players have drawn connections between Altruist artwork and the Chiliad mystery, and yes, I certainly see that. I suppose the theory goes that the glyphs found up the face of the mountain and the mural were left behind by altruists. And I'm not awfully sure if that would add or subtract gravitas from the Chiliad mystery. Now I'm sure these reclusive, disenfranchised old men have plenty to gain from slating the government, as it's clear they're not a big fan of taxes, otherwise they wouldn't be living in seclusion but they're also not exactly friendly people, so I'm not sure what they'd get out of using art to allude to the fact that the government is up to stuff up the mountain when they already know that. Now, I refer to all of these things as loose ends because they don't really impact the conclusion I'm about to draw, and if they do, it's not by much. So, without further waffling, shall we just get to that already? To conclude today's video, the Chiliad mystery is a multi-layered conundrum. There are different answers depending on which angle you're viewing it from. From a storytelling perspective, it appears to allude to the fact that the FIB and the government are up to some nonsense and building UFO-looking aircraft in secret, and the reason can't be good. Will we ever know what that reason is? Probably not, but there's a good chance that based on all of the imagery about the man, etc., the public probably won't benefit. Where the inspiration came from may be the public perception of what a UFO might look like, but at the same time, they could genuinely be reverse engineering alien spaceships to build a new generation of technology, such as the Fort Zancudo UFO, which bears some resemblance to the B-2 stealth bomber, albeit more sharp around the edges, which is ironic considering this is a circle. The functions of these vessels is unclear, but I doubt they'll be used to drop teddy bears on the masses. To the player, it appears to be a nice soft landing symbolising the end of the story mode adventure. The conclusion of your journey through this world before you factor in the online component at the very least, and it provides an opportunity to reflect on the adventures you've had in this open world casting a wide net to encompass an awful lot of mysteries that though largely are unrelated to this one, factor in in small ways. And then of course it has meaning for the online components as well, the egg and the jetpack symbolising GTA Online content. Maybe once upon a time it was also hinting at story mode DLC, but the opportunity for that has come and gone a long time ago. As for the bulk of the information around the Chiliad mystery, I believe an awful lot of it is just noise, made deliberately vaguely relevant to send players round in circles, and that's probably for somebody's personal entertainment somewhere. But hey, maybe there is more out there to find. I'm certain I haven't covered every single corner of this mystery, conspiracy, whatever you want to call it, in this video, even though it's approaching an hour in length now. And maybe just some of it, one tiny minor detail, might transform how you perceive the entire thing. But I believe, personally, the Chiliad mystery is intended to be far simpler than what it's become. I have a feeling Rockstar knew this mystery would get people scratching their heads, but I don't think even they could anticipate just how much it would be sensationalised. And that comes from somewhere. People genuinely want more. And with GTA 6 now approaching in the very far distance, maybe we won't have to wait long now, in the grand scheme of the universe at least, to find out if the Grand Theft Auto series' greatest mystery has any more twists and turns in store for us yet. But of course, whether or not that will be the case is a question for the future. Anyway, I'm going to bring this video down here. Thank you all for watching, I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff. I would massively appreciate it, of course, if you want to do those things. If not, I can't exactly force you at gunpoint, so do what you want. I'd also like to thank my mate Scotty, that's not his actual name, 
His real name is John Seatbelt because he invented the seatbelt for helping me come to understand this mystery to the best of my ability, hopefully. He compiled the PDF that I've been using to cover the broad strokes and genuinely it's been incredibly helpful, if not a little bit schizophrenic. He also made a compelling PowerPoint on how to correct the Leaning Tower of Pisa by shoving various copies of Nigel Farage's autobiography under it, but that's not important. However, if that building suddenly becomes straight, all I'm saying is, you know who did it. Anyway, with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point, but until next time, please take care and goodbye.